in today's lesson we're going to talk about how to do some simple calculations when a patient has hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is one of the more common electrolyte disturbances that you'll find in the hospital and there is a systematic way of determining what to do in order to correct hyponatremia. And before we begin this lesson, and it's broken into two parts, this is the first part where we walk through a simple calculation, and then the second part we'll do something a little bit more sophisticated. There are two key things that you have to know when doing calculations for hyponatremia. The first is that sodium changes, concentration of sodium changes specifically, um, are due to changes in water. And the second piece of information that's equally critical is that changes in sodium concentration are not due to changes in sodium. What this means is that when we do our calculations for hyponatremia, we're going to rely on this particular feature of hyponatremia, that the total amount of sodium, which is represented as milliequivalents of sodium, does not change. So if we come up with some calculations that represent the total amount of sodium, we can then use that number to determine how much water has to change in order to reach a desired concentration of sodium. So these are the two key points that you need to know when you're doing calculations regarding hyponatremia. And so let's walk through a particular example uh, so you have a better understanding. So what we're going to say is that we have a patient and we'll give you some basic parameters of the patient. It's a female. The weight is 70 kilograms for this patient. And she walks in the door with a concentration of sodium equal to 110 milliequivalents per liter. And the question that you're being asked is how much water has to be lost in order to get to a concentration of 140? This is what we're going to try to figure out. How much water does the patient have to urinate or perspire or both in order to get to a concentration of sodium of 140? So let's figure this out. Let's put our patient parameters up here so we remember. 70 kilograms is the weight. It's a female, or she's a female. And we're starting out with a concentration of sodium, which I'm going to label in blue now. of 110 milliequivalents per liter and our target concentration of sodium is 140. So how do we do this? Well we know that the patient will have to lose some water because the only way you can get a concentration of sodium of 110 is if you have taken in too much water. So we know that the patient in this particular state is water overloaded. So we're going to have to lose some amount of water to get to a concentration of 140. But remember our second rule when doing f uh, calculations about hyponatremia, which is that the actual content of sodium, which we're going to label as red, the actual milliequivalents of sodium does not change. So whatever her, this patient's total sodium content is, that's what it's going to be when she achieves a concentration of sodium of 140. So let's find out how much sodium this person actually has. And to do that, we're going to take the total body water, multiply by that by her concentration of sodium currently
and that should approximately give us the total amount of sodium that she has in her body. So we figured this out already um, and what you'll get here is approximately three thousand eight hundred and fifty milliequivalents of sodium not milliequivalents per liter just milliequivalents now this number which represents the total body sodium or the total sodium content does not change so she's going to end up with this much sodium the same amount of sodium that she started with except this time she's gonna to have to lose some amount of water in order to get to 140 so all we do is divide by the total body water minus that amount that we want her to lose to get the concentration of sodium which we have stipulated to be 140 and so if you do all this math you're going to get a value for X and X turns out to be about 7.5. So that's how much water, 7.5 liters, she will have to lose if you're going to go from a concentration of 110 to 140, keeping in mind that the total amount of sodium never changes. And that's the simple way to do a calculation on hyponatremia. In the next lesson, we'll complicate this a little bit further, but we'll use the same principles that concentration of sodium changes because of changes in water, and that concentration of sodium does not occur because of changes in total body sodium. We're going to use these two rules to come up with some more formulas and calculations, and hopefully you'll have a better idea of how to perform these on the floor when you have a patient with hyponatremia. Thank you very much.